the final college football playoff rankings were announced. Uh, number one, you have Alabama. They're 11-0. They won the SEC. Makes sense. I agree. Totally like it. Number two, you have Clemson. They are 10-1. and one. They won the ACC. Okay. Uh, number three, you have Ohio State. They're 6-0. and oh. They won the Big Ten. Fair enough. They're a good team. They're the number three seed. And number four overall, you have Notre Dame at 10-1. and one. Uh, They lost in the ACC championship game to Clemson. And the more I think about this, uh, the more I understand why the decision was made to choose Notre Dame as the fourth team in the college football playoff. I also don't like it. So the number five team is Texas A&M. And uh, Texas A&M will play... Uh, University of North Carolina in the Orange Bowl, they are out of the college football playoff. And I, th- my number four team would have been Texas A&M, in my opinion. Now, the college football playoff committee has made a statement with their decision. Uh, really, they were saying and showing that they would rather Alabama play against Notre Dame rather than Texas A&M And uh, so Notre Dame versus Alabama is going to happen down the road. And then we'll get Clemson against Ohio State. Uh, The rematch of last year's college football playoff game. And uh, remember, Clemson eliminated Justin Fields on Ohio State last year. So look, again, I don't agree with Notre Dame uh, getting the number four spot in the college football playoff over Texas A&M. And I don't even know that saying I don't agree. It's it's more just I don't like it. It's I understand why they chose Notre Dame. I found it a bit frustrating, though. Uh, both Notre Dame and Texas A&M have lost one game. Uh, the only loss Texas A&M had was they lost by 28 points to Alabama, who's the number one team in the country. So you would think if you're going to lose to anybody, it might as well be the team that the playoff committee selected to be the number one team in the country. Uh, Now, again, they lost by 28 points. That's not a good loss. It wasn't really close. Uh, Notre Dame, their one loss was to the number two team in the country, Clemson, uh, by 24 points on Saturday. And again, I understand why Notre Dame was chosen. Notre Dame beat one of the top three teams in the playoffs. So Notre Dame's uh, schedule, I think, has been deemed as a very challenging one. I don't really buy that. Everyone's talking about how, you know, Notre Dame's strength of schedule. I go, like, who do they beat? Like, they, they beat UNC. They they beat, I mean, Clemson's a good win, like, for sure. But also, Notre Dame beat Clemson when their starting quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, didn't play due to COVID. And it was very, very close. Like, Notre Dame barely beat Clemson, who had a backup quarterback in the game. Like, I, what am I missing here? I, I, it's just, huh. And, oh, yeah, by the way, this is a Notre Dame team that barely beat Louisville. It was like it was twelve to seven. Louisville went one and four. Like I, I just maybe it's because I don't. I'm not the biggest Notre Dame guy. Like it's not that I hate Notre Dame. I don't really. I'm not endeared to Notre Dame. Like I'm not like oh yeah the great Notre Dame. I don't have a big affinity for them. I'm I'm just kind of indifferent and I don't. I'm not swayed by their the grandiose of them. I guess. And I I, I get they're a big fan base. I get that they are. I mean I'm sure. Like, but isn't Texas A&M as well? Like, I don't know. I don't know if this is a financial decision entirely. Uh, I, I, I just, I think the biggest thing that hurt Texas A&M was that, you know, they already played Alabama this year. So maybe people said, you know, we don't want a rematch between Alabama and Texas A&M. Let's give us a game that no one's seen this year, which is Notre Dame against Texas A&M. Uh, I will say, though, here are some true statements about Texas A&M and about college football right now. Uh, Texas A&M went eight and one. Their only loss was to the number one ranked Alabama team. They won eight games in a row in the SEC. And I, I get it that Notre Dame won 10 games, but they did it in the ACC. Even a bad you know, string of SEC teams is better, in my opinion, than the ACC. So I, I, I don't really, I, I don't know how you pick it's, it's weird to me. People are saying strength of schedule, and I, I just don't agree. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. And, you know, to win eight games in a row in the SEC. Meanwhile, again, Ohio State didn't even play eight games. So I, I don't know. 
I, it's it's weird. I I feel frustrated that Texas A and M got left out. Uh, you know, I, but I also do believe that Ohio State belongs in, even though Ohio State didn't play, uh, you know, as many games as the other teams. They're one of the four best teams in the country, and I think it'd be a real tragedy to leave one of the best teams in the country out. Now, I will say, if you snub a team who didn't play, who played enough games, and then you leave a team, like imagine this: what if Ohio State gets COVID? And they play, but like without their quarterback, without a bunch of star players, then it would be really frustrating that Texas A&M was left out in that in that sense. Um, but I, I don't know here, man. I, I will say, if Ohio State hadn't canceled three games this year, they still would have been undefeated. Like the the three games that Ohio State didn't play were uh, two and four Michigan. They didn't play a two and three Maryland team, and they didn't play a two and six Illinois football team. So. Combined, the teams that Ohio State didn't play this year were six and thirteen. You can pretty much guarantee Ohio State would have been nine and zero if they'd played a full schedule this year. Uh, I, I would have put Texas A and M in as the number four team again. Notre Dame barely beat Louisville, uh, twelve to seven, and that's a Louisville team that went one and four this year. Like it's not, it's not like Louisville's some impressive team. It's just that Notre Dame, I think, is a little bit overhyped. Who they got some good players and made some good plays at the right time, like. I, I will say I was impressed with their win over Clemson, but that was a Clemson team not at full strength. Uh, but as much as I'm complaining about the outcome and I, I would have picked you know, Texas A&M and all this stuff, I'm not going to fight it anymore. I, I wanted to do this segment and say my opinion, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to fight it too hard because I think no matter who the number four team uh, chosen was, it wasn't going to be a team that would win the national championship. It's likely Bama would have beaten Texas A&M or Notre Dame or Cincinnati or whoever, whatever whatever team you want to put in there. I'm pretty sure Alabama would beat them. And uh, it's likely that Bama's going to crush Notre Dame whenever that game happens. And uh, I, I also kind of on a, if you're thinking about Texas A&M, and if you're a Texas A&M fan and you're frustrated, you feel like you got screwed over and snubbed, I'll say this. Would you rather finish the year losing to Alabama in the college football playoff, which, and, and maybe you win. I don't think you win, but maybe you win. I, I mean, I, I like your quarterback. I like Jimbo Fisher. I like where you're at going. The program's trending in the right direction. Would you rather risk losing uh, your last game of the year? Or here's the probable ending for uh, Texas A&M. You're going to play North Carolina in the Orange Bowl. You're probably going to win that game, maybe by a lot. I think it's better to go out with a win and say we got screwed but we did everything we could control. Isn't it better to kind of go like, ah, we did what we could and we got screwed over rather than saying, you know, getting in and losing. So I I think for the health of Al- for A&M, for recruiting, all that, it can't hurt for A&M to crush uh, North Carolina in the Orange Bowl. And uh, we'll see if that happens down the road in, in the, I guess, guess it'll be New Year's Day when that game happens.